Hello guys, welcome to another you know video tutorial by No Code Africa. In this tutorial, you're going to learn how to uh, you know set up uh, an application that allows for multi vendors, right? So um, a typical example of existing applications or platforms that uh, have a multi vendor possibility is Fiverr. So Fiverr is more like a platform you can you know, you can go to to uh, either find perfect freelancers that can do different things for your businesses, or you can come here on Fiverr and freelance, you know, offer some services. So their talents on this platform are called sellers, the, the clients are called buyers, right? And then we have the other user, which is the admin, the owners of the company themselves. And then the same thing with Upwork. Upwork is also uh, just like Fiverr, a little bit different from Fiverr, all right? So, but freelancers are also found here. Clients are also found here. So it basically connects the two people. And then another one here is AliExpress. AliExpress is um, it's a big uh, marketplace where we have you know buyers, we have sellers, and we have the owners of AliExpress themselves. So the 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 people that sell here are the the buyers sorry the sellers sorry yeah so the people that sell here are the sellers and then of course if you want to go here on aliexpress to buy something you are definitely the buyer and then if at all you own aliexpress you are the owner of the company so those are like the multi-vendor you know possibilities within one application so if at all you're trying to build something like that that has uh, that has uh, the vendors the the customers and then has you as the admin then you need to understand how to do uh, a, a setup on a setup for your application using Flutterflow and of course firebase so this is what we're going to do like what we're going to try to do it like really quick and um so here the user can uh you know register with email and password and then also try to sign in of course and then when trying to sign in uh, at the back end, it will be done such that uh, it will be able to select the rule that they registered for at the beginning. So if I thought they registered as a talent, it will take them to the talent dashboard when they are logging in or when they've just in, uh, originally registered. And when they are trying to like sign in and then they had registered as a client, it will take them to the client dashboard. The same thing for founders, if they had registered as a founder and they're trying to sign in, right, to take them to founders dashboard. So this is something that you really need to know how to do in uh, Flutterflow. Okay, so we will try to create it like really quick. We call it multi -vent. So this is like the basic st setup, the sign up and sign in screen. So let's say uh, I already have some users already in the system. So I will try to sign this person in. And then it will bring me here to talent. It shows your talents. This is a different screen. So I will just log out. Then I can go ahead and then uh, add another. Another uh, user. That was talent, right? HQ. So uh, I'll go ahead and sign in. And then here it will take me to client. All right. So basically it shows you talent, client, and all of that. So um, I'm going to show you how to set up multi -ven. Uh, it's more like a very simple basic application just to show you how to do the multi vendor uh, design and concept okay so we will get to it like immediately how do we start so first of all uh, this is the original setup I had but I just want us to go ahead and uh, you know look at the structure right so I think the best thing that I would do here, you can refer to the previous the previous video I made. If you check the description in the video, under this video, you're going to see what I had already created before. Although we uh, the application did work, but um, there were some errors in the condition, right? So with this here, you have uh, you'll be able to find the solution to those errors. Okay, so. Now um, this is the, the 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 Firebase. So what we did was we went ahead and created a project in Firebase. We called it uh, Multivan App. I believe that you're not like totally a beginner on this. So Multivan App, and then we also created a project on um, on Flutterflow called Multivan, right? So this is it, Multivan, and then we have some basic setups here already. 
so we have uh, the login screen we had already set this up if you have issues setting this up refer to the very first video uh, then the sign up screen is here I just want to show you the logic right because it was the logic that that was faulty in the previous video so here you can click on um, home this is like a this is a screen, like the screen they're supposed to see when they're logged in, but we, we're not making use of these. I'm rather using a route. That's the, we're using these screens now. And I'm using client, founder, and talent. So when they, when they go ahead and sign up, they can sign up. When they sign up, they will be taken to the onboarding screen. Okay, they'll be taken to the onboarding screen where they need to click either of these uh, buttons. So if they click on talent, it will authenticate them as talent in the dashboard, right? And when they are trying to sign in, it will take them only to talent dashboard. I will show you how to go ahead and then add actions to this because I'm very sure that you can set this screen up by yourself like this. If you don't, if you can't, you can just refer to the video on the description here. Okay, so um, what do we do? I'm just going to explain how it was done and then you can see it. Then from there, I will, um, you know, maybe uh, disconnect a couple of things and then fix it back. Okay, so here we went ahead and created the project in Firebase. All right, then we turned on Firestore database. All right, you can do that by coming to build and clicking this and getting started. All right. And then after that, um, we don't necessarily need this. I know in the previous video, you might see these uh, user details here, yeah? but I'll just take it off so that you can see that we don't need it at all. So we don't need the user details. So I'll just delete it off. And so we don't have user details. We just have just users, okay? So we have users here. This is the first, this is the very first cr created one. And then there's another one. So this user collection is created automatically when you're setting up your application right from the beginning in Flutterflow, right? When you turn out on authentication. Okay, so um, the, the, re the real thing I want you to see here is the part that has to do with the logic, okay? So I believe you can create, uh, you can create your project and set up these screens. So let it be that you can create these screens. So you see a screen here for talent, for onboarding, for login, for founder, and for client. Okay, so that's basically it. Let's uh, let's just fix this thing at once. So, um, click on this. Uh, let's say authenticated user email. Okay, so let's go to founder. I just want us to fix this. Click on this. Uh, authenticated user email. Uh, then come here, click on this, authenticated user email, okay? All right, so we have fixed this. Now, what we really need to do now is we will have to go ahead and uh, look at the things that are happening here. You know how to add your logout button, right? So you click on this, then you click on add action, and then you go ahead and then turn on authentication and then log out, okay? So if you open this, you'll see what I mean. Uh, if I click here to edit, so you see basically what happened was, uh, if I click on this, yeah. So the idea was you go to Firebase Authentication and then you click on Logout. That's how that was created. So I don't want to really focus on the little issues. I just want us to go to the main thing so that we don't have this video long at all. The very first one was long enough. <laughs> okay, so here, what I want you to understand is that uh, you need to go ahead and create, uh, uh, you don't need to create any collection, right? So let me delete this particular collection because we don't need it. Yep, so we don't need this collection at all. We just need the user's collection. And then this user's collection is created automatically. All that you need to add extra is talent as Boolean, client as Boolean, founder as Boolean. When you're done with that, you've, you're finished. You don't even need to do anything in the you don't need to create a collection here in the in the Firebase, right? So as far as you've done your authentication and you've turned on your authentication, you've turned on your Firestore database, right? Then you're good to go. Only after you've turned on the Firestore should you go ahead and turn on your storage, okay? Don't turn on storage before turning Fire, Firebase database, Firestore database, okay? So now how we do, we do we go about looking at this? I just want to show you how it was done. 
Now we have uh, in the login page, so we have sign up, the user goes ahead to fill in some details here and fill in some details here and clicks on create account, right? I'm clicking on create account, the user can go ahead and then click on add action here. Sorry, not the user, you, <laughs> we're, we're the ones trying to fix some things here. So when the user clicks on create action, like create account, what am I saying? Create account. Okay, so uh, let's see what happens here. So the, the idea is when they click on create account, it goes ahead and not authenticates and then creates an account, right? So this, these things are basically given to you by the uh, login uh, template, right? Sign up login template. Okay, so, but if it's not, just refer to the first video and you will see how it was done there. So now basically after authentication, you add another action by clicking here add an action and then you go ahead and say navigate to onboarding right so that's basically what happened there so you have to make sure that you authenticate and create an account first all right before anything else happens so then when you're creating an account you provide these details then the next thing you just need to do is you can go ahead and um, let's see let's see let's see you go ahead and come to sign in Okay, no, let's not do sign in yet. Let's go to onboarding and explain what happens in onboarding. Now, the user clicks on create account. It creates a user account, all right? It creates it. Remember, it has already created. So you can create any detail again under the user, except you update, okay? So that was like the error that we made. So you can go ahead and um, you've set up this page. So what we now need to do is give actions to this button. So. You click on talents. So if the user clicks on talents, let's see the actions that happens. So basically you see here that there's a backend call. Let's uh, let's click to edit it so you can see. There's a backend call. So we do backend call. Previously we we, we did create a document. Uh, backend creates document. No, we're not doing create document. We're doing backend. Then you go to Firestore, update document. Okay, so when you click on update document, it will ask you, it will ask you to choose the uh, choose the source on set. You see here on set, so you click on it, and let me click on this. Then you go to authenticated user, and then you pick user reference. That's what you do, and then you confirm it. And after after this, after there is a backend call updating the document because the idea is this, is this: we have created the, the the account already. We just want to update the details that are inside it. Look at this for example. Uh, now, if 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 you come here to the 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 documents, you see that when it is being created, like basically what happens is that during creation time, like when it creates, it's going to just put the created time, the email, and the user ID. It won't put this. Uh, it won't give you the the this particular field that says talent is true. It won't do that. Right, so that's when you now need to go ahead on, on update it, and that's what these buttons are doing. The buttons are doing updating instead of creating. So that was like the, the only thing that we needed to correct. So you fix this, the same thing with these other buttons. You go ahead and then uh, back and call, update documents, navigate to client, right? That's basically what you do. And then for the founder part, the same thing. So you go ahead and back and call, update documents, user record reference set fields to founder and then of course you're setting the field to founder and you're making it true just like we did in the previous one and then you navigate to founder afterwards that's like adding another action and then when you do that then the other rules are still the same so when you come to login you will see here for sign in which we added some actions there were a couple of actions here so we did authenticate the login first. So we authenticate the login first, then we set up some conditions. You will see how we did this in the in the previous tutorial. So just check the description below. You see the tutorial. Uh, you see how we did set up this and how this was explained. Okay. So uh, this was uh, the little update I needed to add to the previous video. So you can just see the 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 correction to the little glitch that we had. Okay. All right, please click on the subscribe button and like the video. You can drop a comment if you have any challenges at all. Thank you very much. See you in the next video.